Hey, Walter Sorrels back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making some handy forge tools. So a couple months ago, I made a tool called a guillotine, which fits into the hardy hole on your anvil. And uh, it basically allows you to use little replaceable dies to do all kinds of different stuff on your anvil. So this video is going to be a follow-up to that video where we're going to show some additional tools that you can make, additional dies that you can make that will fit into that guillotine. In case you missed that video and you're interested in seeing the guillotine made and understanding a little bit better about what its purpose is, I'll attach a link in the cards and in the description. Now we'll build two dies today. One that is a necking tool for making hammers and other little jobs where you want to neck something down in the middle of a piece of stock. The other is intended for notching the junction between the tang and the blade on knives. Now the second one is so simple it almost seems dumb to demonstrate it, but it's also incredibly useful so I'll show it anyway. Okay, we'll work on the necking tool first since that's a little more interesting and complicated. I'll start with a piece of one inch round stock and a bar of half inch by two inch stock, which is what fits into the little slide section of this guillotine. First, I'll cut the pieces for the body of each die. Then I'll deburr them on the grinder. Next, I'll cut the business end of the dies from the round stock. Of course, depending on what radius you want to neck down to, you can substitute any size of stock. Now, I need for this little round piece to fit in the space here with a little play on both sides so that it doesn't bind. So, I cut it well short of the width of the channel. Chop it off on the abrasive saw, deburr it, Then I'll grind a flat onto the bottom where it'll mate with the body of the die. And really that's all there is to it. Now time to weld them up. Nothing fancy here. Tack weld one side, flip it over and weld the other side. If you just weld one side, before you tack weld the other, there's the possibility that it'll bend a little bit and you won't have it seating nice and flat on there. And that's likely to cause the weld to fail. So then it's over to the grinder to get rid of the weld spatter and the excess weld material. I'll clean up the welds themselves using a three quarter inch contact wheel so everything blends. Now we're not looking for perfection here, just reasonable smoothness. Now a quick test. Yeah, Walter, you moron. There's no room for the stock to fit here so the tool can actually do the work it's intended to do. Now, I could pretend I did this on purpose so I could trim it to a perfect length or whatever, but that is not how it went. When you make tools on the fly, sometimes stuff like this happens. Fortunately, all I have to do is chop off a little on the saw, and we're left with this. Perfect size. Done. So, the stock goes in here. You bang on the top of the hammer as you rotate the stock and you create a nice, uniform, symmetrical neck. You can do this on round stock, you can do it on square stock, hex, whatever. Alright, the next tool is amazingly useful and so stupidly easy to make that, like I said earlier, it's a little embarrassing to even show it. But, if you've ever misplaced a hammer blow when forging a tang and screwed up a knife as a result, you'll immediately see how just outstandingly useful this tool is. So all I'm doing is taking these dies and grinding a 45 degree bevel into them. You can grind it more or less right up smack to the edge, or you can leave a little meat. The closer you grind to a knife edge, the more neatly it'll forge this little corner into your tang. At the same time though, if you bite too hard, 
you may get stuck with a little stress riser here that will compromise the strength of your tang. Also, the skinnier the edge on this little tool, the quicker it's going to deform. Now when it deforms, you just grind it back into shape, but something to consider and experiment with to get a tool that's optimal for whatever use you intend for it. Here's where I landed, we'll see how it works out. Here's a quick demo just to give you the basic idea. Like I said, you're using the tool to establish that corner between the ricasso and the tang. Then you sort of connect the dots and forge the rest of the tang out however you intended it. Whether it's a rat tail, hidden tang, you know, whatever kind of tang that you wanted to make, easier to do now. quick note here on material. If you're making dyes that you intend to use day in and day out, you do well to use a high temperature hardenable steel like M4 high speed steel or dye steels like H13. I'm just using mild steel because it's way cheaper, way easier, way simpler, and most importantly, these are not tools I'm going to be beaten to death. So that about wraps it up. As you can imagine, this guillotine tool could be made to accept just an infinite number of tools. I'm sure if you make one that you'll think of some stuff to do with it that I never thought of. So have fun with it. Thanks, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamones or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamones as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!